So hello everyone, my name is Rachel Kretzky. I'm one of the organizers here for DC Startup Week. I'm also a founder myself of a tech startup, UPACE. I'm so excited, we're halfway through day two of DC Startup Week. So every September, we bring together entrepreneurs, founders, investors, partners of the community to have five jam-packed, full days, educational content and networking. And because of COVID, we're doing everything virtual this year. So it's been an exciting challenge for the team to put together the virtual event, but it's been um, a really great learning experience as well. So first I wanna say a huge thank you to Kim for being a huge supporter of DC Startup Week with everything that we do and always jumping in to help entrepreneurs at all different levels to be able to learn and grow as a founder, but also as a startup. Kim is the CEO of Luna Startup Lab, which helps particularly women entrepreneurs to be able to grow their businesses and has a lot of experience as a founder and an angel investor as a part of Citroen Angels. So with that, please join me of welcoming Kim to the virtual DC Startup Week stage. Hey, you guys. I'm Kim Casey, and I'm so excited to be here today. Rachel, thank you so much. And um, I'm just so impressed with everything that DC Startup Week is doing this year to support entrepreneurs um, across the DC area during what has been a really hard year for a lot of people. You guys have really risen to the occasion. And this week is just amazing. A whole week of virtual content is incredible. So everyone just please send a big thank you to Rachel as well today. Um, I'm really looking forward to talking to everyone about personal branding today. So I'm going to show you a little bit uh, some of the secrets of success that I have learned over the years building a personal brand for myself and other entrepreneurs that I work with. And uh, hopefully we're going to have some fun. So let's see. Let me share my screen. And uh, that way we know, we'll all know we're in the right place. You can see obviously right away, I have the entire internet open on the top of my screen. Um, but <laughs> that's because I've got a lot to talk about today and um, I'm really looking forward to getting to know everybody. So before, I'm just gonna jump right in and uh, this is gonna be a super fun class. I love talking about personal branding. Um, in today's world, now that everyone's online, personal branding is even more important than ever. And I'm gonna just kind of help everyone uh, learn some tips and tricks and strategies to uh, develop your personal brands and learn a little bit more maybe about yourself and how to create that strong personal brand. Um, so today's agenda, I'm gonna just touch on quickly how the course will work. Um, I want to get to know you guys and share a little bit about myself so you know a little bit about my story and what my personal brand stands for. Um, I'm going to give you some kind of tips about why people, some ideas about why people don't always invest in their personal brand, even though we all know it's super important. And I'm going to offer some guidance on the benefits of building your personal brand. So I'm going to try and make a case and convince you guys when you leave here today to make building your personal brand your number one priority. I'm going to share my $3 million marketing secrets with you. So you know the secrets of million dollar entrepreneurs. And then I'm going to jump right in with my five step formula for building a powerhouse personal brand so you too can launch yourself and uh, really stand out and shine online. And then before we leave today, I'm gonna to give you some last minute tips. All my classes are super results oriented and action oriented. And I wanna make sure that when you leave today, you know exactly what to do in order to launch yourself going forward and help build that super strong personal brand. Okay, so uh, let's see. Oh, and everyone along the way, if you can save your questions to the end, that's great. You can drop them in the chat box. I think everyone knows how to use Zoom by now. I feel like this is probably my 1,000th and 27th Zoom call of the year, but uh, use the chat box. Um, I can actually, where is my chat box? Well, I'll find it. Um, there it is, there's the chat box. I'm gonna drop my LinkedIn profile 
in the chat box so you guys can connect with me online uh, and you can do the same invite your invite everyone to connect with you and you can introduce yourselves uh, but first this is a super hands-on workshop so if you have a pen and a piece of paper to write with i know we love typing on our computers but science and research show that wearing a mask works so when you're out in public definitely wear your mask so you can uh, keeps from spreading COVID. That's my tip today for research and science. Um, but research and science also shows that using a pen and paper helps people um, be more effective in their goal setting. It helps you retain uh, the information you're receiving and writing down, and it gives you a way to look and review and find things more quickly and easier than if you take your notes on your laptop. So I always encourage the entrepreneurs I work with to keep a notebook or a piece of paper and a pen handy so you can write some stuff down and really retain that and remember it for the long term. And get ready to roll up your sleeves today and get some stuff done. We're gonna work really hard to build our brands. Okay, but first I would love to know a little bit about you guys. We've got 82 people here in this class today. I'm super excited. I'd love to hear who you are, um, what you do, and maybe like what you're hoping to get out of the class today. And if you could just drop that information in the chat, uh, it'll really help us all to get to know each other. I see uh, Lionel who's with Sparks Recruiting. Uh, Larissa from Alexandria, Virginia. Welcome, Larissa. Chloe, great to meet Chloe. Will Wong. Oh my gosh, we've got so many people here today. QuickBooks Online Pro Advisor. That is Irina. Great to meet you. Uh, coaches, consultants, personal financial coach. I can always use some personal financial coaching. I love it. Uh, design Studio. Awesome. You guys are amazing and um, it's so great to meet you. And if you want to share, maybe just so we all know we're kind of in the same boat, like what's uh, some of the challenges that you've been facing in building your personal brand? Or what are you hoping to learn about personal branding today? Anybody have anything they want to share? How to rebrand. I'm going through a rebrand right now. So I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the challenges that I've been facing trying to rebrand my company and myself. It is not easy, but together we can make it happen. Um, great. How to leave a lasting impression. We're going to talk about that, Shelly. We're going to talk about how to make your brand a little more memorable, how to build a personal brand and a business brand, how to do it systematically. Okay, cool. We got lots of great great curious questions um before we get into the class i thought i would share a little bit about myself so you know how i got here i didn't start out as an entrepreneur i actually started my career as a professional athlete believe it or not i uh, played competitive golf in high school and college and afterwards i decided to become a golf professional I uh, traveled all over the world for five years playing uh, competitive golf in Asia, Australia, Europe, um, and across the United States. I retired from my career as a professional athlete at the ripe age of 27. Uh, and by that point, I had already spent 20 years. And one thing that I really learned as an athlete was that and I was, I was an okay athlete. I wasn't like a superstar. I did win a tournament, had some top finishes, but all of the money that I made as a professional athlete was from being a brand ambassador, an influencer, and endorsing other people's products. So I got to be really good at representing myself and being my own agent, learning how to market myself, learning how to do my own PR and um, really kind of put myself out there and see myself as a brand, not just as an athlete, but um, it really taught me the power of personal branding and learning how to build my own brand. One of the biggest paydays I had as a professional athlete was doing the World Ladies of Golf calendar. Somewhere out there, thank God, before the internet existed, I was part of the Kim Casey calendar. So. For all the years I spent uh, refining my skills as an athlete, my biggest payday came when I was putting on a bikini and posing in a sand trap in Hawaii to be part of this calendar for Golf Digest Japan. 
So I think it just shows you that when you build a strong brand, it opens a lot of opportunities. And um, sometimes uh, it really helps uh, accentuate your business. After retiring from golf, I went to business school and I started my career as an entrepreneur, first in finance, and then back in the fitness industry, working for um, a fitness apparel company. And that helped me launch me into uh, Shark Tank. I got to be on Shark Tank. This is a clip of me from 2009. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. And then um, after that, I became an executive coach. I, as an athlete, uh, kind of bring it full circle for you guys. As an athlete, I had tons of great coaches who helped me level up my skills and always take my game to the next level. And as an entrepreneur, I didn't have that. When I first became an entrepreneur, I didn't have anyone coaching me or guiding me. And I felt so lost. Um, I found it really hard to find my focus. And I never felt like I was clear and I was always kind of second guessing myself. So really as an entrepreneur, getting to find coaches and uh, people to help guide me along the way was super helpful. And when I started speaking and teaching and coaching, uh, I really fell in love with it and I wanted to pay it forward. And that's what really kind of brought me to become a coach and start working and helping with other entrepreneurs. So one thing that's consistent about all three of the places in my journey is that an as an athlete, as an entrepreneur, and as an executive coach, investing in my personal brand has yielded the highest ROI for my business every single time. Not Facebook ads, not TikTok videos, not Instagram or reels or stories, but really investing in my personal brand, uh, getting out there, uh, doing speaking events like this, and really kind of putting myself out there and making sure that I am visible and memorable and that I can communicate what I stand for. Uh, again, I wanted just to say this is one of the things that helped me get onto Shark Tank, uh, really being able to communicate my story. Uh, in 2009, I was graduating from MBA school at UCLA Anderson, and I got recruited by Mark Burnett and the Shark Tank team to appear on one of the very first episodes, um, season, the third episode that was ever aired of Shark Tank. We didn't get funded by the sharks, <laughs> but at that point, I really kind of hoped that they would just put me on the air because I knew that it would be millions of dollars of free publicity for me and for my company. and. Um, and it turned out to be a really great experience. But I know I've got wonderful pictures here to share with you guys today at DC Startup Week. As an executive coach, I do a lot of work with entrepreneurs. Um, I'm also a TEDx organizer. So I help, I do help as my part of my job, I help people really kind of think about their personal brands um, and building an authority brand, especially as like speakers or coaches or authors. Um, these are a few of the wonderful people that I've been able to work with this last year in DC. And throughout my presentation today, I'm going to share some pictures and stories of people I work with and just really love. So hopefully you'll see some familiar DC faces, but Chef Kwame Anwachi from Keth and Ken, Helene Flowers, um, Dr. Marty McCary, Joss Carson, who just published her first book. Maggie O'Neill is a really wonderful artist. Um, Malik Dope, who is um, just finished his run on America's Got Talent. So just some really wonderful folks that I've been able to work with and help them refine kind of their personal brands as speakers and influencers. This is one of my favorite pictures that, just, that shows, that's me. You can see my messy blonde hair uh, with rehearsals for Jessica Carson. And then Jess is on the TEDx stage here in the other photo. So just really wanted to share some of the wonderful people I've been able to work with um, as a coach and, and help just let you know that I'm credible and that I, um, I really kind of am walking my talk today because I tell all these folks the same thing I'm gonna tell you guys. So before we jump into talking about your personal brands, I wanted just to kind of like ask the question of why doesn't everyone, we know personal branding is so important and we know that it generates this huge ROI. Uh, so why doesn't everyone invest in their personal brand? Well, it's not easy because personal branding is deeply personal. You know, that's why it's called personal branding, but it's 
really personal and self-discovery requires courage. So I just want to say a double thumbs up, a huge high five to everybody on the call today for having courage to take a look at their personal brands and make the time and effort to be here. You guys should totally high five yourselves and be really proud of yourself for showing up today because it's not easy to look under the covers and see what's really there. It's not easy to kind of like examine yourself and your life and figure out ways to improve, but it's one of the very first steps to being a super successful entrepreneur. It's never too late to improve yourself and your brand. And, um, and I think that some people really resist branding for themselves because you don't want to feel salesy. Is it, am I alone? Has anybody felt that way? Like you get a little scared about feeling too salesy or too self-promotional and you don't want to come across as an egomaniac by like sharing all these pictures of yourself and talking about yourself. So building a strategic personal brand can really, um, help you, uh, kind of alleviate some of these fears and also build a brand that doesn't feel unnatural or fake. All right, where are we? And why, so also just wanted to take a quick look at why now more than ever having a strong brand is the secret to success. Well, now more than ever, our whole world is moving online mainly because of COVID, but Digital marketing continues to evolve in things like video. Um, I know Instagram just launched Reels. I'm sure some of you have seen TikToks this year. And we all know that video, you know, really being able to communicate yourself in public, uh, communicate your brand is more important than ever as we continue to move online. And it's, so a strong personal brand is so important too because it makes it easy for a person for people to find you. If you've ever met someone and looked them up online and you weren't able to find anything about them, it kind of makes you think, oh, what's going on with this person? Or if there's nothing about them, no social media profiles, no LinkedIn, no website, it really makes it hard to get to know the person. It makes it hard to trust the person. And I think as consumers, we want to work with people and we want to work with brands that we know and we like and we trust. And people check you out whether you like it or not. So it's really important to take control of the message. And you that's a wonderful thing about digital marketing and about being online in today's world is that you can control the message, you can control how you come across, and um, you can really put your best foot forward and communicate what you want people to know. And just as a quick reminder, employers, investors, um, especially for entrepreneurs, if you're raising money or you're trying to build or launch a new business, um, people are gonna check you out online, not just your business. So it's important, even your Tinder date <laughs> is people are even, I'm not sure if people are even dating right now with COVID, but um, everyone is looking at you and your brand. Um, and so today I'm going to share a little bit about my personal process for building a strong personal brand. I think Steve Jobs, um, Steve Jobs has this really famous quote about if he only had a hundred dollars left to spend, he invested in PR. Well, if I only had a hundred dollars left to spend, I would invest it in my personal brand whether it was speaking or doing something to promote myself and increase my visibility in the world. Uh, no one can hire you if they can't find you. So super important stuff. All right, so that was a little bit about me and a little bit about why personal branding is important. And now I'm going to share, let's see, I've got my handy dandy checklist here. I told you pen, paper, got it. Um, I've got my handy dandy checklist and I promised you guys to do that. I was going to share some secrets with you. So I'm going to do it now. Uh, million dollar marketing secrets. Um, number one, first secret I'm going to share is to set goals. So even for your personal brand, you want to make sure that you are setting goals for your brand so that you know, um, you can't reach your destination if you don't know what it is. And a goal is the best way to do that. So my challenge for you, I run an accelerator with my company, Luna Startup Labs. I run an accelerator for 
um, ambitious entrepreneurs who want to grow their business to a million dollars or more. So today you'll hear me talk a lot about million dollar success secrets uh, or million dollar marketing secrets, because that's really my sweet spot as a coach is helping people take their company from zero to a million and um, setting the plan, creating a plan to grow beyond that. Uh, but setting goals is super important. And I think a lot of us go through life without goals. So today, if you got that pen and paper, my first challenge for you would be to set at least three goals that you hope to have come true by the end of the year. I think we've got one, two, three, four. We are in September, hard to believe. Uh, we've got about 90, 100 days left, I think, until the end of the year, 105 maybe. So it's a good time to make the rest of the year the best of the year. So the secret that all million dollar marketers share is they have very clearly defined goals. They write them down with pen and paper and they know where they're going. So even before you start focusing on the fun, cool, um, creative side of building your brand, you gotta have goals and you've gotta know where you're going. So that's millionaire secret number one. Million dollar marketing secret number two ah, is invest your time in revenue generating activities. Okay, so I love social media. If I could just sit around all day and watch pictures of golden retrievers on Instagram, I would be like the happiest person in the world, but that is not going to make me any money. So we want to be super strategic in building our brands online and try to invest our time in revenue generating activities. So you want to really know why you're building your brand. That goes back a little bit to the goals that we talked about in secret number one. You want to include an action. If you don't do anything else today and you decide to leave after this slide, just do a couple of these things and you will see a dramatic improvement in your online marketing and branding activities. Um, include a call to action in everything you do. Measure the results according to your plan uh, so you can do more of what is working best. As you're posting content and really promoting yourself online, think about what activities are making you the most money, which posts are driving the most sales, which activities are getting you the most clients, I could post a million times on uh, Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and never get a single client, but through one speaking engagement or hosting one live event or getting out and meeting people in real life, I can get enough clients to kind of run my business for an entire year. So know where you're making money and invest your time and energy and building your brand and helping it to drive revenues. All right, so million dollar marketing secret number three. Always, oh, typo. I can correct the, I love doing these Zoom calls. I can correct my presentation in real time. Um, always be selling yourself. Uh, always be selling yourself. The secret of people with really strong personal brands is they are always marketing themselves. They are always selling themselves. They are always um, promoting themselves, even when you don't realize it. Uh, and I think that they have a really good idea of who they're selling to and what it is that they are selling. So when you're building your personal brand, you really need to kind of think strategically about these goals and about revenue, what revenues you're generating or how you're going to reven generate revenues from your business and who it is that you're trying to attract and sell to. Is it clients? Are you looking for investors? Are you looking for fame? Do you wanna be famous? Do you wanna be an influencer? Are you trying to build business relationships? Are you looking to be more attractive to other people? Are you looking for revenge? There's all kinds of reasons why we build our personal brands online, but know what it is that you're trying to sell and who you're selling it to. And once you get clear on that, you're, it'll make it a lot easier to be super successful. All right, so let's get to, with those three secrets in mind, set your goals, be super focused on your time and invest in revenue generating activities 
And also the third secret is always be selling yourself. So make sure that you're spending your time um, investing in content that promotes you and your business. So let's get to launching you. So the first part of building a personal brand is to start where you are. So I thought it'd be kind of fun since we're all online, we're doing this class digitally. The first step is to really, of creating a personal brand is to know where you are, right? You can't get to your destination unless you know where you're starting from. So the first thing that I'm gonna challenge you guys to do, and you can do it right now, which is super fun, and I'm actually gonna do it myself so that you can kind of see I'm gonna eat my own dog food today and show you the results when I did these things this morning, um, is to start with Google and just Google your name. It's one of the easiest things you can do to see how the world sees you. So you can just go to Google and I think I did this here earlier today, yep. So um, I typed in my name to Google and gave myself a quick search and uh, this is what came up for me. And then I always tell people it's a great idea to check out your pictures as well so you can really see how the world sees you. So it's just a great way to audit your brands and know what's going on. And if there's anything that needs to be fixed, you know, you can see when you search for my name, I give myself like maybe a B minus here because I don't have anything super exciting that comes up. You know, I've been a professor at American. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter and LinkedIn. You know, I'm an angel investor, but it doesn't really lead you right to my website. So I know I need to kind of like work on my SEO to boost my KimCasey.com site and get myself a little higher up. Uh, when you look at my pictures, I think there's actually something interesting here that I want to point out because it's kind of um, an interesting thing. There's actually another woman in the world who has my exact same name. Uh, her name's Kimberly Casey and she's a doctor. And I feel like for the last 10 years, this woman and I have been doing battle to get our social media handles and our domain names and even in SEO. So it's good to search yourself on Google and know who else is out there uh, that might have your name. If there's any negative information, you want to work on getting that removed, um, updating your pictures. You can see I used to have red hair <laughs> and I need to fix that online. So it's just a great way to do a quick brand audit and start a baseline to know what comes up. And this is what your employers, your employees, your customers, your friends, uh, even that Tinder date, this is what they're seeing when they Google you. And you can bet they're doing it when they come across your name for the first time. So the first step to building your strong personal brand is to check up on yourself and do a little Google stalking. So start there. The next thing that I challenge everyone to do when they're creating their personal brand is to audit your social media. So I'm going to focus, I focus on the big five, one, two, three, four, five. I'm not going to include stuff like TikTok um, or Twitch or Pinterest today because I think really the world, um, you can get the biggest bang for your buck by focusing on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, and YouTube. Uh, and I'm going to show you what I saw when I Googled myself. I just taught this class a few months ago, so I, I had to update all of my social media profiles. But um, I'm going to show you the results from my profiles and give you some pointers as I go along. So this is my Facebook page. You can see one thing that you'll notice on all of my social media accounts is that I've tried to use the same photos of myself in every social media site, and I've tried to use the same hero image. So you can see I've kind of got this quote that I really love called, what would you dare to dream if you knew you could not fail? And then I position myself as a business coach, a personal branding expert, and a keynote speaker. And then hopefully on Twitter, yep, on Twitter, I've got this same I've got the same uh, header and photo of myself. Um, and you can see I've got some cute emojis here. You know, I love America. I love love. I love tacos, yoga, dogs, and travel. Um, and then on my LinkedIn page, a little bit more of the same. Um, still the same header, still the same image. 
uh, I think on my Pinterest page and then on my YouTube channel. So I think I get a thumbs up there um, for having a consistent brand, but you'd be surprised when you look at your own social media sites, you might have different photos of yourself. Maybe they're a little bit outdated. You haven't updated your profile photo in a while. You don't have a consistent hero image, which is this guy up here that shows you know really what you stand for or something that helps to make you memorable so consistency is uh, one of the best ways to make yourself memorable uh, we don't want to confuse people when they're looking for us online so having the same photo the same um, kind of description similar handles I just use my name and I think all of my profile handles on social media and then uh, the same hero image. Just make those little changes. It's the fastest way to refresh your brand and kind of like do a little rebrand and um, make sure that you're putting your best foot forward online. Okay, so the last third part to um, starting where you are really kind of doing a quick personal brand audit is what about the website for you.com? So everyone should have a, a personal website, even if it's only a splash page, but it should be something that's like yourname.com. I was lucky that I was able to get my name. This is my page. Well, actually, I think I mentioned I'm going through a little bit of a rebrand right now. So um, this page is under construction still. <laughs> uh, so you can do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> but um, I'm working on a rebrand for my business right now too. And I'm gonna talk a little bit later if you stick around about some of the challenges that I'm facing because personal branding is really hard even for me. And this is like what I'm an expert at. But this is myname.com. And it just, it makes it so easy for people to find you. And even if you're not a coach or you're not really in business, if you're looking for a job or you're trying to establish yourself as an expert, just grab yourname.com and put up a single page. Uh, make sure you have your picture. And if it's the same picture that's on all your social media sites, then you get like bonus points there. But you can just kind of see that like for me, I'm trying to really, I'm working really hard this year to figure out like all of these things that I'm teaching you today. So I'm getting better at it. You know, I kind of like position myself not as an expert, but as a guide. Like I work with a lot of ambitious entrepreneurs, just like you guys on the call today. And um, I really like to position myself as a guide who helps you find the tools that you need to succeed. So I think that, you know, the future you want is within your reach and it's my job as a coach to help you get there. And this is just a little bit of kind of like, I've got a free offer for people and, uh, you know, I'm really here to help you master every area of your life. And, um, I kind of introduce myself and you can see, I know I'm using the same pictures over and over again, but again, it's my philosophy that consistency builds credibility and it establishes trust with people because they know, um, they know that you are who you say you are and they recognize you right away. So when you're only meeting people in the online world, it's really important to use the same photos over and over and over again. Okay, so now we've audited our personal brands and um, we kind of like know what we look like online and maybe some of us, maybe some of you guys have found some room for improvement. You know, you need new photos or new hero image or like a new little bio. So you've kind of got your marching orders there. You know, you need to make sure that you're looking consistent across every social media channel. The next thing about building a strong personal brand is really to like, Get to know your true brand, and this is can be um, really hard, but I found a fun way to do it, and I call this the $5,000 branding exercise. Why is it the $5,000 branding exercise? Well, a couple of years ago when I was working with a startup in Chicago, we hired this very fancy branding agency to come and help us build our brand, and they charged us $5,000 to do pretty much exactly what I'm going to do with you right now in the next five minutes. So I'm not going to charge you $5,000. <laughs> um, 
and I hope it, but it's really fun. So if you guys will indulge me, I think you guys have your pen and your paper. So we're just gonna play a quick game and help you find your true brand. And um, this is a exercise a lot of Fortune 500 companies do when they're going through a rebrand to kind of like dig down deep and figure out what words and phrases really describe their brand. So, all right, so one, two, three, four. So we've got a couple of exercises here. Um, and all right, I'm gonna get started. So here we go. If you or your brand, imagine you like as the brand right now, if your brand was a place, what place would it be? And I want you to write down three, three words that describe that place. Okay, so what I mean by a place, like, are you a country? Are you a city? Um, you know, are you France or are you Los Angeles? Are you Buenos Aires? Are you Kissimmee, Florida? Are you New York City? It can be any country in the world. And if anybody's feeling frisky, you can like totally type it into the chat box and share with everybody else what place your personal brand would be. But the key here is not just to write down the place, it is to write down the three words uh, that describe that place. So like I used to live in Los Angeles, so I always think I'm a California girl. So part of my brand is California, which is like sunshiny and it's kind of happy. And I don't know, sometimes I can be a little bit flicky. <laughs> um, you know, you might be like... Um, England, you might be super sophisticated and like uh, having tea with the queen and um, your brand is very aristocratic. See what I mean? So that's kind of the example. So pick your place and write down three words that describe that place. And then the next exercise uh, in this $5,000 branding exercise is to imagine that your brand was a car. All right, so what kind of car would you be and why? We wanna write down just three words that describe that car. Everybody always likes it when I share mine. So I can tell you that I'm like, I'm kind of like a cross between a Mini Cooper and like, a Mercedes-Benz SUV. <laughs> I always go with the convertible again because California sunshine. I love kind of the wind blowing in my hair. I like to think I'm outdoorsy and fun and adventurous. So I always think of convertibles that way. And I just love Mini Coopers because they're so cute and fun. Um, all right. So we're writing down, we've gotten our first, we've gotten our place and we've gotten our car. Okay, so the next one is kind of fun too. Imagine your personal brand was a drink and what kind of drink would you be? Now I used to be, I used to say I'm rosé wine or like champagne because I'm all bubbly and fun, but I stopped drinking a couple months ago. So I realized that I had to like redefine my personal brand with a new drink. <laughs> so these days I feel like I'm coffee because I love coffee and um, it's energizing and it's the first thing I do when I get up in the morning as I get my coffee and it like just really kicks it into high gear for me. And I like flavored coffee, so I like vanilla coffee. So, you know, I like things to be kind of sweet and spicy. But what kind of drink, maybe you are like a vodka tonic or fresh squeezed orange juice or um, kombucha or gosh, I don't know, somebody, Chianti, see, there we go. Gatorade, I love it, high performance. You guys are really good. <laughs> I love green tea, sparkling cider, French martini. Oh man, I miss those. All right, keep it coming, you guys are killing it. Just be sure to write down those three words that really describe why it is you picked this drink to represent your personal brand. All right, so now moving on. Okay, we're gonna keep going with this like food analogy here and think about food. If your brand was food or a meal, 
it can be anything. You got to like really dig deep here and be creative. But what kind of food would you be? It might be like the greatest steak at Ruth Chris Steakhouse, or it might be like a lemon flavored Laura bar. It might be a sweet green salad. I think I'm listing out all of my favorite foods right now because <laughs> I'm hungry. <laughs> but like, what kind of food would you be? What is it? Are you, are you like a hot dog at a Chicago uh, Cubs game? Or are you, you know, a steak at a New York City steakhouse? Are you uh, a cr crabs at like uh, a dockside bar in the Chesapeake Bay? What is it? Are you guys, are you like a hamburger um, at a roadside diner? Are you vegan? <laughs> are you uh, super healthy? Are you like comfort food? Cupcakes, one pot meal. I like that, a one pot meal. It's very efficient and effective. <laughs> Korean barbecue. Oh man, what I wouldn't give for some Korean barbecue right now. You guys are making me super, super hungry, but I love the creativity. Okay, so let's do one more. Let's do two more. I think we've got a little time. I'm going to try and wrap this day up by three o'clock. I always run a little over, but I'm going to try and be super respectful of your time. Okay, uh, it feels like you guys are working hard. So if you, your brand, took you on a date, if your brand took you on a date, what would you do? I know this is, I can give you the example that like our Fortune 500, our $5,000 branding consultant did for us. I think they were giving us the example of 7up because uh, that's how they learned this. I think that's how we learned this in B-School too. And like the famous branding exercise is if 7up came to your door and took you on a date, where would you go and what would you do? So now imagine your brand uh, taking someone on a date. Where would you go? What would you do? Would you go to the park or the racetrack or a movie? Socially distant dates, of course, uh, or basketball game. Would you go riding a roller coaster because it's so thrilling and wild and adventurous? Or would you go to a class or maybe antiquing or to the countryside? Rock concert. <laughs> Will Wong, I love it. He's going to DC Startup Week. A picnic in the park. Okay, now don't just, once you think of the date, that's hard enough. Now think of the three reasons why. What are three words that define that date in your mind? Um, rock concert. I think Lee Westell's going to a rock concert. So Lee, your challenge is to like, why a rock concert? What is it about a rock concert that really like resonates with you? Or Vina is going on a beach yoga retreat because it's mindful energy, calm and trust. Lots of fun fun, lots of people and very happy. Awesome. So we're getting three great words. So now we've got a country, a drink, a food, a car, a date. And the last one is always a good one is if your brand was a color, what color would your brand be and why? Give us three words that define that color in your mind when you think of that color. I, I've got a consistent theme of California and outdoors. So my favorite color is always yellow <laughs> because it looks like sunshine and it's happy and bright and sunny. Um, but your brand color might be a little different. Maybe it's purple or green, maybe it's gold, maybe it's silver, maybe it's every color of the rainbow in one. but pick that color and those three words. Okay, so here's the cool thing. I don't know if you've learned a little bit about your brand. Oh, black, I love it. Orange, red, everybody's got some awesome colors. Purple, perfect. Posh, purple is very posh. It's like the color of kings, they say. <laughs> Orange, bright and warm, black. Yup, I love it, you guys. Wonderful descriptive words. 
So this is super awesome when you think about building like a true brand, a brand that's authentic and that really like is a reflection of who you are. The reason you pick these things and the words you use to describe some of these things really are a little bit reflective of your true personality and kind of who you are and um, things that really resonate with you personally. So if you look down this list of words that you've used to describe the, your brand as a place or a color or a car um, or a date, uh, you know, you look at some of these words and it really helps you come up with a list of words that s reveal your true brand, that really define, may help you get some insight into who you are and help you define your true brand. So these are words that you can use in your bio, in your profile, when you're talking about yourself or your brand that help people get a very clear image of who you are. Um, <laughs> Madison asked a great question. She said, if, if and I'll, I'm just gonna deviate for one sec. She's asked if my color is yellow, why don't you use it in your website and header pictures? Madison, the funny answer to that question is everything I had was yellow up until about 48 hours ago. <laughs> and I changed it to aqua because that's supposed to be the color of the year for 2021. So I wanted my brand to be more on trend. And if you wait in two more days, I'll probably change it back to yellow, but it was yellow up until now. So like some of these things like Madison is pointing out yellow was my favorite color, the color that I think defines my brand really well. Uh, it's a great color to use in all of your marketing materials. Uh, up until a few days ago, yellow was the color I use for all of my brand colors, all of my marketing. Um, but the words I think are really, part of the exercise is really to come up with the words that help you. It can be really hard to describe yourself or define yourself. And these words or this list of words really can help you tap into your true brand and, and some descriptive phrases that help define you. Uh, you know, royalty, powerful, grand, um, explosive, warm, sunshine, happy, really cool things. So it's a great way to start building that brand and thinking of the phrases that you want to use in the future. All right, so like I said, uh, we're gonna play another game really quickly. Um, a brand refresh is super hard. Uh, I am supposedly the guide here, but I don't like the taste of my own medicine. And I've kind of put a bunch of these questions to myself. Um, but as you're thinking about refreshing and building your personal brand, you really wanna think about a couple of things. Um, who are your best clients? A lot of um, coaches and marketing people these days will ask you to define your ideal client. I don't want you to do that. I want you to think about who is your best client because if you're working with people right now, you've got a profile that's like, I think the data speaks for itself. So your ideal client and your actual client sometimes can be very different. I just kind of want you to think about who your best client is. Who are the people that actually buy from you? Who are the people that are using your services and your products and that are really kind of like big fans and supporters of your brand? And just think about who those people are as you're creating your messaging for your personal brand in the future. And something else that a lot of times when we think about personal branding, um, the most important thing is like, the impact that you have on the, on the world, on the customer or people. And one of the ways that I find helping people to get in touch with their personal brand is to think about how you help people transform. You know, it's so easy, like when you're planning your brand, you can just wind up getting very, uh, losing your focus very quickly. But when you think about how people transform, uh, it gets your message super tight, super quick. With my entrepreneurs that I work with, uh, for me, I'm really extraordinary at helping people set clear goals and create a plan to execute the, those goals and then holding them accountable as they execute over time. So for all the other things I do, those three things, I can help you set goals, I can help you create a plan, and I can hold you accountable while you execute are like my biggest strengths. And when you work with me, those are the three things that you know you're always going to get. 
So take a few minutes to think about how you help your clients um, or your product helps your clients transform as a result of working with you. Because at the end of the day, no matter what promises we make, we all want to get results from the people we work with. So we want to know how we're going to change or transform as a result of working with you. And that promise that really becomes the essence of your brand. That's the promise that you're making. You know, I, my promise to people is that I can help you get clear. I can help you get focused. I can help you, uh, set goals and create a plan of action so that you get real and meaningful results that matter to you. So what promise are you making to your clients? If you're a coach or a consultant, if you're a financial manager, you know, you might help people really develop their financial future. Um, if you're an insurance broker, you might help people like ensure their future. Uh, if you're in technology or design, you might help people design the brand of their dreams. But what promise are you making to people and how you help them transform is the proof of that promise. And then last part of kind of really tapping into your personal brand is what are you really best at? Um, what, what are you best at? That's like really the essence of your personal brand is really drilling down into what you are best at. Um, what is the one thing in some way that I find really helps people? Like if you had to teach a class today, what are you really qualified to teach? Or what do you feel super confident in teaching other people how to do or be? And we've got a few other fun questions about what your vibe is. We've kind of answered those in our $5,000 branding exercise. Um, but it's just always a great idea to think about like your vibe as a personal brand. You know, do you want to be smart and sophisticated or are you goofy and fun? Are you classy? Are you bougie? Are you ratchet? If there's any Megan Thee Stallion fans out there, you know the Savage song that I am quoting from there, but it goes into like really making sure that you develop that consistent brand and the words that you use to define yourself. And we already touched on what color defines our brand. So we're gonna move on from there. Symbols are good things. Uh, some of the brands that I've worked with have a symbol or a mascot or an animal, um, some kind of talisman that really defines their brand. Uh, and if you do, I always think that is, um, people love the story behind the brand. So they want to know if they see a symbol or you have kind of something that represents your brand when it's not your face, then it's always cool to be able to explain on your website, on your social media, why you use that symbol. It's just another story that you can share with people. And I think they really like getting into the why, why you do what you do and who you really are. All right, and so we've done the word exercises. Um, we talked a little bit about audience. We're going to skip over to step three. Um, one of the best ways to accelerate your success as a personal brand is not to start from scratch and reinvent the wheel, but it's really to model the best of the best. So I always suggest that you kind of look at your uh, look at your mentors, look at your competitors, and pick three people that you think are doing a really good job of building their personal brand and then model what they do. And I can kind of give you a silly, cute example from my own life. I felt like my Instagram was really kind of, um, kind of lacking a little bit. And um, so I looked at some of the influencers in my space and this on the left side, you can see what my Instagram used to look like a year ago. And I just really didn't do anything special other than model um, kind of what other people were doing. And I added more quotes and I started using more images of myself so that people would recognize me and know when they came to my Instagram that they were on my feed. And I started trying to use like quotes that were more reflective of me as a person. You can see, you know, my love for yellow. I've got the shine quote. I've got quotes about setting goals and um, being nice <laughs> and a couple pictures of myself as well. And I didn't invent that all on my own. I just looked at some people that I thought were doing a really great job with their personal brands and um, 
and I just copied them. And I've got another example here I want to share with you. One of the companies that's in my accelerator right now, and I just, I love them so much. So I want to, of course, give a little shout out to them. They're called the Harlem Candle Company. It's a woman owned, black owned business uh, in New York. And the owner's a woman named Terry Johnson. And this is Terry, uh, her about page. If you have a personal brand and a business, uh, as the founder, you should always have um, a picture of yourself on your own website and a little bit about you. People want to work with brands they know and trust. And so add that picture of yourself and then tell a little story about, the f about you. And look, you can see Terry's here rocking her yellow dress. She's absolutely gorgeous. She's got this elegant, sophisticated candle company. She loves to travel. So you can see she's got like these great photos and a little bit about her story. And then the reason I'm talking about this is because I want to show how this carries over into like all of her media. Remember when we did the audit on our uh, social media sites, you can see that Terry is like consistent with her brand. And if you go through her company, uh, she's got some really beautiful images. She's using herself. She's got two stays with Terry. Notice that she's got the same photo and that beautiful yellow dress that you see on her website. So you know you're in the right place and you know she's the person. And then when you go to her personal, I just think Terry crushes it on social media. So when you go to her social media, her travelista, you know, she loves to travel, Terry site. You know, she's a CEO of the Harlem Candle Company and she's linking back and forth between her brands. But again, there she is in her beautiful yellow dress. She's totally consistent. And you can see her here doing an Instagram live, also in a yellow dress and pictures of her traveling and living uh, the glamorous, beautiful life that she lives. And then I think we've got, I'm going to actually jump into my uh email and you can see an email from um, Harlem Candle Company that here she is again in her beautiful dress um, with an email they're sending out on a regular basis. Awesome. So let's see, that brings us to making yourself more memorable. How do you want people to see you online? Well, we started with a couple of great phrases. Uh, in our $5,000 branding exercise that um, can help you using those words, phrases, colors, can help you craft your online brand uh, so that people see you in the way you want to be seen. Also a good idea to kind of know, again, your promises, uh, your core values, and one thing that you're really qualified to teach. And then how to stand out and be even more memorable. Is there something unique or fun that you want to be known for? And weave that theme, like we saw Terry with Harlem Candle Company and her beautiful yellow dress and kind of her love for travel or all of her pictures, all of her themes. One of my favorite entrepreneurs in the DC area, Danielle Toussaint, uh, runs a company called She Thinks Purple. And everything she does is purple. She's always wearing purple. As you can see she's got purple dress, purple lipstick, purple uh, uh, is the theme of her brand and color. And last step, I know we're right at the edge of uh, the session. Um, so I'm gonna wrap this up as quickly as possible. The last step about building your personal brand, I've given you guys some great tips today. Uh, they always ask the question when we were talking about goals and goal setting, how do you eat an elephant? They say you eat it one bite at a time. So uh, the secrets to building a strong personal brand online, it's not rocket science. These are really simple things that we can do to improve our brand today. You wanna do a little bit every day, but do it for a long time. So you wanna be the tortoise, not the hare. Slow and steady always wins the race. You wanna be consistent uh, in order to build trust. Don't go changing. Once you refresh your brand, commit and don't go changing like every other month uh, and put it in your calendar. Make part of building your brand part of your everyday routine. Schedule 30 minutes a day or 15 minutes a day and take it one step at a time. So eat the whole elephant, but eat it one bite at a time over time and you will develop a really strong personal brand. All right, I promise to leave you guys with some action items. Uh, if you only do three days, three things today, 
update your photos online, update those social media photos so they're consistent across all of your channels. Check your bio on social media, make sure that all the links in your profile work, add a photo of yourself to your company page. Uh, and then if you really want to learn how to create great content, um, I'm going to share this video, a link to this Ping Jun video. I think this is just a killer video on um, how to create great content as a social media brand. So I'm going to drop that you in the I chat. To reach over 2 million people. Uh, and you guys can watch it later. All right, so here you go. This is a great video that tells you how to create a strategic content plan or a content plan for your social media, how to really stand out and shine online. I've given you some great tips how to build that brand, but Peng Jun is gonna, if you watch this 28 minute YouTube video, he's got some extremely effective tips on how to create content for your brand. Thank you so much. That's it guys, thank, thank you, you so much. much. If there's any questions, I'm happy to stick around. <laughs> So we have to get off of this soon to get the next session started on the next Zoom link. So I apologize, Karen. It's I okay. But from personal experience of working with Kim, she's absolutely amazing. So feel free to email her, a LinkedIn message. On Attendify, you're able to send her a private message or even put out your message on the activity stream and we can get Kim to answer them there. Kim's also coming back for more talks throughout the rest of the week. So you can look at that at her profile and see her upcoming talk. So thank you so much, Kim. Thank you for everyone for attending. We're kicking start at 3 p.m. on financial planning, series A and beyond, and a couple more. So take a look at the schedule, and we hope to see you on the next Zoom shortly. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you, guys. Have a great day, and go build those brands. Bye.